Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Gear Priority Podcast. I'm your host, Justin, and today we are diving deep on sleeping pads. I'm joined by Devin Ashby, who you may know from the Backcountry Exposure YouTube channel, and we'll be talking about the best sleeping pads and which ones you should avoid. Combined, Devin and I have tested almost every sleeping pad on the market. You could stack them probably to the ceiling, and we're excited to share some superlatives with you, like what is the best ultralight sleeping pad, the best pad for beginners, and also the most overrated pads. Hey, Devin, for the people not familiar with your channel, where are you calling in from and how's it going? Hey, Justin, stoked to be here, man. It's uh, awesome to join the podcast and talk about Backpacker and the P. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it feels like with sleeping, sleeping pads. Uh, but I'm, I'm in the Salt Lake City, Utah area. And, uh, yeah, just, you get, so you get experience with a lot of different conditions. Cause I think, I think something that I, I see with sleeping pads sometimes is people will be testing sleeping pads, but it's always like maybe they're down in California and they're testing them in pretty warm conditions most of the time, or, or even like up here in Canada, it's very difficult to get, to take a sleeping pad out that has an R value below four. So like, I don't really test a lot of sleep pads with our bodies below four unless i'm heading down into the desert down into like nevada arizona but you got you kind of get the whole gambit of weather down where you are i guess eh? yeah i mean it's all it's all four seasons for sure i think what's unique though about about utah and like my situation is there's a lot of diversity of trail opportunities and just environments you've got high high alpine areas like 10,000, 11,000 feet. And so even in the summer, you're in a potential of having snow falling. It could be August. And I mean, I've been on trips in August and I've had six inches of snow. It's crazy. Uh, but then even like in, in the desert, it's still a high desert. Like four to 6,000 feet is the elevation on average. Okay. So even then you get pretty extreme temperature like shifts and 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 whatnot from like in the middle of the day overnight you could have i mean i've been on a, a desert trip in end of april and it was like 17 degrees overnight but 80 degrees during the day yeah like that's a in in, in fahrenheit like that's yeah. a huge temperature temperature swing so yeah <laughs> when it comes to a sleep system it's pretty critical to have things dialed in for those kinds of conditions. Yeah, definitely. And I think we'll, we'll definitely be touching on the, the, the best sleeping pad for kind of cold, cold weather conditions out there and, um, some recommendations for that before we kind of jump into that, we always start things off with rapid fire questions just to kind of get to know you a little bit better. Um, starting off with this, this one, this one just off the top of your head, how many sleeping pads do you think you've slept on? in the last five years, different, different models. <laughs> at least, at least a dozen. Yeah. Um, and because you're looking at probably three or four from Nemo, two to three from Big Agnes. Uh, I mean, Handful from Thermarest. Probably two to, two to three from Thermarest, from uh, the Amazon, from yeah. Zenbivy. Like it's been a whole myriad of, and I mean, there's other things in there too. Sea to Summit, some of the some of my favorite pads for sure. But I, I bet it's well well over a dozen. I bet if we actually went through and counted, you'd be like in the in the twenties somewhere for over the last five years. Because then you have different like models and updates and like the like I think the Quasar the Quasar and yeah car camping mats. It's it's a, it's a lot <laughs> just from what yeah, I've seen I mean, on your it, channel. <laughs> if if you go back through my entire history of backpacking i've been backpacking since i was about eight years old <laughs> so yeah i've had the whole gamut of sleeping on one of the original i mean not the original i'm not that old but uh three-quarter length thermarest self-inflating pads that are like an inch thick at most yeah and it's i i slept on one of those pads for years like my entire like teenage years all through my backpacking that way um and it wasn't until i was like 24 maybe 25 
like right after my wife and I got married is when I bought my first X light and I used that X light for nine straight years, wow. eight years, something like that. So that's some good durability. That's, that's impressive. Yeah. That, that pad was the best option at the time. Cause this was 2012 when I, or maybe 2011 when I, when I bought that pad. So then I had, I mean, I had a good amount of, of time on that pad for sure. And that, that was, that was, I think if I remember correctly, that was kind of right around when the X light was, was coming onto market. So that's pretty impressive that if like, that's how long it lasted as like an early iteration model. Cause I think we see some pads sometimes that they hit the market and maybe the first batch aren't quite up to durability standards compared to pads that have been made for, for a decade or something like that. Yeah, totally. And I think, I don't know, I've seen plenty of people where like the baffle balloons, like the weld co totally dies and it becomes an issue. That never happened with mine. And, but at the time too, and I'm sure we'll talk about this with, with pads, 20 inches was like the standard width. And I feel like that is on its way out. <laughs> Hopefully. At this Fingers point. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Second question. How many kids do you have? Because I think, I think you, uh, you got... show some of them on, on the channel occasionally. But... Well, I'll show you. Oh, okay. there's one, two, three. And the awesome. dog. And, and, the, and the fur baby. <laughs> <laughs> and the fur baby. Yep. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Now they're good and kids. Nice. That's good. Yeah, they look they look they look like sweet kids on the on the trips that you guys go on. That's awesome that you're able to go on trips as a family. Yeah. Looking, and looking they enjoy that, which I think is important. Exactly. That's that's the key. You know, you don't want to force force them into something that they don't enjoy. But I think especially as kids, there's ways that you can kind of guide the enjoyment a little bit more than than uh than not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. Okay, third question. What's the best location you've ever backpacked? That can be like a like a trail or a general kind of like mountain area, um, like a canyon, anything kind of along those lines. I'll give you two answers. Um, the first is locally, just because that's where I spend most of my time, but the uh, the Perea River Canyon in... Well, I tec technically that's Arizona, but uh, close enough to Utah. But it was an incredible experience uh, through college. It was, a, it was a college class that went down that canyon. It's like 45 miles. Uh, it's a bucket list kind of, kind of trip. It's incredible. Um, but then second, in 2019, I spent a week in Olympic National Park and did a trip overnight on the beach. And that was a first time experience for me to go backpacking on the beach. Like nice. you, you think about beach camping and you're like, I'm not sure exactly how that is going to work, but it was amazing. Uh, and then the second, the second night we spent up one of the, the rivers in the rainforest and it was just incredible. Yeah. Awesome. Especially on the West coast, West coast beaches, you get the sunset happening and, you know, that kind of stuff. It's yeah, pretty, pretty phenomenal. <laughs> yeah, it was fantastic. And fourth question, um, gonna add, add, add your response to the, to the stats here. And I, I, I res I'd add a, um, an option to this, to this question because of, of Lloyd from Garage Run Gear, but it, it was originally <laughs> toilet paper or bidet. But the, the third option that you now have, thanks to Lloyd is, or rock slash sticks for white, for dealing with the back end. I mean, I've done it all. I've used it all, <laughs> but my, my preference is still toilet paper or wet wipes and to, to pack it out. It's, it's hard to use a bidet when you're using a wag bag. Yeah. Or if you're and... water carrying in the desert. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I very regularly am using toilet paper and wet wipes and cleaning up that way and packing out. So that, that, that makes sense. What, what was the stick rock experience like, like for you? Is that like, a, I, I just have to try this <laughs> out or was it a, 
like I'm going to actually incorporate this into my systems for a little bit. <laughs> okay. So this was, this was my intro to the use of a bidet. And, uh, so I was, I was at a wilderness first responder recertification course, getting that, that research done. And one of the instructors during a break was teaching everybody. Cause he brought up like, if somebody had like contaminated hands or whatever, for some reason, and we were like, and he brought up the fact that he's like, well, that's pretty common with my left hand making a joke. And I'm like, this doesn't make sense. So then he like spent time explaining himself and his process for how he uh, cleans up after, <clears throat> after using the bathroom and using sticks and leaves and rocks and the, the works and the left hand with the, uh, a little bit of soap and doing the wash. Yeah. So I was like, after that point, I was so intrigued. It was time for me to, to have a stab at the, the bidet experience. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, uh, that's a, uh, yeah. Interesting choice of words there. But it, it, I mean, it, it works out. I've got one of those, uh, Kulo, cleans yeah it's like the the little black deal that it does does a well enough job but it's not my go-to yeah they, 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 they work well but i think yeah definitely definitely not conducive with a with a way bag situation yeah so <laughs> all right let's let's jump into sleeping pads give the people what they're here for um kind of keeping giving some people some advice on what they should keep an eye on what they should kind of avoid altogether. Um, I, I think there's, I, I know for me, there's, there's not a ton of sleeping pads that I think are like just complete garbage, but there, there are a couple and there's definitely some overrated ones in my opinion. Um, but let's start, let's start with, uh, maybe, maybe it's not an easy one, but I, th I, I think, uh, it's an interesting one. And that's what is for, for you, what's your go-to warmest sleeping pad. And I'm interested here. Cause like I've, mine for like minus 40 degree Canadian winters. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious what, yeah. what's, what, what's your go-to like cold weather sleeping pad and kind of what kind of conditions are you taking that, that out in? Okay. So cold, cold weather. I'm, I'll be honest. I am not interested in going into the types of conditions that you put yourself through like minus 40. That's, it's not going to happen. That also is not even an option here in Utah. Like negative digits are in, in Fahrenheit. When I'm talking, it's Fahrenheit. Um, it's very uncommon to be out in, in that low of a temperature. So usually I'm in like low twenties, high teens, maybe single digits. And in that case, just to guarantee that I'm going to be able to sleep warm. I've got an Xtherm Max, so the 25 by 72 uh, size pad. And for those winter trips, that's the pad I choose. Um, but three season, like shoulder season uh, pads, <clears throat> I'm going to use either my Nemo Quasar or my Big Agnes Rapide. And th those have very values in the like four four range, I think, for those ones. Yeah, just well, no, the quasar is still I think three and a half, three point four, or even three point three, something like that. Uh, but the the repeat is four point two, four point three. Okay, nice. Yeah, and I think I think for, yeah, for me it's it's the X X term for those cold weather trips. It's I, I've I've used the other like the, the other pads out there with our values of, of over, over six, kind of over seven, like from X pad and, and C to summit. And they just, for some, I just don't, for some, whatever reason it's, and maybe it's like the reflective technology that's in the X therm or, or what, but it's just so much warmer than any of those other pads. Have, have you used, have you used either the Ethelid XT extreme or like the X pad down mat seven before e either of those? Um, I've used the X-Ped that I borrowed from a friend out on like a car camping trip. 
Yeah, that that was an impressive pad minus the baffle system is awful. Um, yeah, I can't handle the the like tubular long uh, long baffles. Outside of that, yes, I have used the extreme, and that was a great pad, but it has one big flaw, just in the sense that it is massive. So it's hard, like it was hard to pack for a regular wide pad. It's the size of like three Nalgene bottles put together. Yeah. At least that's if you get a perfect roll on it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, Which, yeah, it's a obviously. gigantic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> obviously. <laughs> All right. So that's the war- warmest pad, best cold weather pad. I think this next one is probably one that a lot of people um, are going to be interested in, especially if they're through hiking. And that's the best ultralight sleeping pad. So if you're, if you're trying to save as much weight as possible, what pad are you reaching for these days? And there's been, I, it's interesting. It's been, there's been some new pads to market in this realm in the last couple of years here. So curious to hear what you have to say. Yeah. So for 2023, the only pad that I have used, uh, since I got my hands on it in February is the big Agnes zoom UL. I have aside from like a, uh, four inch thick, like car camping pad. I've, I've not used any other pad. Um, and part of the reason is that pad is brand new to the market. And so I'm very interested in being able to, to share the long-term experience with it. And cause I, I think that like big Agnes, for example, has a reputation of, I, w- I shouldn't say like unreliability. But inconsistency is probably what I would go with. That user experience is not consistent in the same way that, like, an X light, you could ask 100 people, and 90% of those people are probably going to say the same thing. That it sounds like a chip bag, but I was warm and I slept comfortable enough for how light it is. Whereas with Big Agnes, it's the pad is amazing. I love it. Or this failed on me. It had, it leaked from the factory or it didn't support me. It wasn't what I wanted it to be. Like it, the spectrum of experience is so much broader. Um, but what interests me about that pad specifically is I had a really bad experience with what I would call the predecessor the the axle air insulated yeah that they pretty quickly pulled from the shelves i, I don't you, think i remember. remember anyone not having one fail on them i think they had a pretty pretty high failure rate yeah and mine never failed like i never had leaks i never had issues with it i just simply did not sleep warm on it okay and that was my my main issue and I have several other friends that also have that pad that share that same sentiment that, yeah, the pad was comfortable, but it just was cold. And I think once like the ASTM rating information came out, I, I doubt that pad ever got actually <laughs> rated, but it probably was actually close to a one R value. Yeah. Would be my, would be my guess. And and how are things but, going with the, um, with the zoom UL? So far with your, with your experience with, with, over the last, I guess, like we're looking at like four, four or five months now. Yeah. So first night on it, I froze my butt off. It was, it was very cold. It was 17 degrees overnight. It was February in the desert. So the ground was already very cold to begin with, which is, I think an, a very important contributing factor to how a pad sleeps and uh, pretty much how much energy I guess it takes for the pad to contain your body heat, um, which I think is closer to the science of how a pad actually is warm. But um, that first night it was very cold, and even that was even with having a closed cell phone pad under me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but. Once I started taking the pad over freezing temperatures, it's been fantastic. Nice. And I probably have 
over a dozen nights so far in in above freezing temperatures and i love it it's super comfortable i would argue that it's as comfortable as the ether light which i had crowned as the king of comfort previously yeah. <laughs> well, well, we'll, have, we'll have to get into into that a little bit of a debate on that i think once we get into the most comfortable sleeping pad because uh i do have some They're i do very have some similar on the on the zoom ul with regards to even to a, like a couple things that I'll, I'll be curious to get get your thoughts on um but i think what's interesting with with what with what you said like the the ground temperature it's such a big factor that i think is often overlooked people often talk about air temperature and while they're they're usually correlated loosely. I think they're in the shoulder seasons is when we see a big difference and when people really need to kind of be aware of that. Cause like, I, I know like for me, I've taken pads out in the springtime where it's been like above freezing temperatures, but then the ground's been frozen and the pad's been like, hasn't performed super well. Whereas I then take it out in below freezing temperatures on like warm late summer or fall ground. And it's and it's no problem like especially like the ethelite xt is an example of a pad that i had a really warm experience in the summer and fall with and then it completely was was garbage for me from a warmth perspective in the in the spring so it's it's and even with these thick thicker pads like we're looking at pads now that are four inches thick air temperature is going to start is going to play a decent sized role by having an impact on those sides it's a lot of surface area on the sides of the pads now yeah, and I've even I've even wondered and been trying to kind of do some research around the idea of are our values even something that you can trust that like how important is an R value in your decision making process in buying a pad? And the conclusion I'm coming to is that <laughs> it's one factor. It's yeah. there's just so many other things to keep in mind when choosing what pad to take with you. And it's almost like a, a trifecta of things that have to come together for it to be the right option. It's, it's, it's a starting point. I, I, I've had, had, um, uh, designers and engineers from both Thermrest and, uh, Rab, uh, and NC to summit for sleeping pads on the podcast. And all, th- all three of them have kind of said the same thing around like, our value is a great starting point. It's it's awesome that it's now standardized, but different a lot. There's a lot of different factors that contribute to whether a pad sleeps warm in real world conditions than what gets tested in the lab by just taking a cold plate, hot plate, and then sandwiching the pad in between. That's a that's such a small small that delta is such a small part of all the other factors. Like whether you're a active sleeper, or what kind of sleep system you're using. It's yeah, yeah. What I what I appreciate about the ASTM rating, though, is I think more than anything, it keeps uh, brands accountable. That you can't claim something that is totally off off the rails and incorrect. I won't call out any names, but there is one brand that comes to mind that it's very obvious that. I'm going to call them out later. If you want to stick around when we talk about overrated sleeping pads, I'm going to probably call it the brand that uh, that you're thinking of. And you, you, you can give us a wink if it's the same one uh, <laughs> that you're thinking of. <laughs> but yeah, there's uh, that that that's really bothered me over the years is is when um, when sleeping pad manufacturers have just kind of seem seem to just make up our value numbers because that's doesn't do the consumer any good it, it's what i really like is that both rei and mountain equipment co-op in canada have been have been very strict with saying like we will not carry your pad if it's not tested to the astm standard so i think a lot of pad manufacturers are just like well got to step up to the plate and um test our pads if if, if those guys aren't going to carry them so it's yeah it's, it's been good good for the consumer i think to have that standardization but i think when it first came out a lot of myself included thought that it was going to be kind of like this golden era for sleeping pad warmth determination and i think over the last few years it's i think we're, we're starting to realize that me that there are the, all those other factors that are going to contribute um to sleeping pad warmth yeah and i mean you would you would, i would put it in the same category as sleeping bags even though there's the en or the iso rating that is 
done on sleeping bags, it still doesn't carry a, a consistency from brand to brand. Yeah. Yeah. And even bag to bag, like I know C to Summit has a couple bags that I find sleep very differently just because of the baffling system that they have. They just have, there's a bag, like the, the spark line has very tiny baffles that if I move around a lot, all the, all the warm air just gets, gets pushed out the zipper around, around the neck. Yep. I find with the, since you called it out, the, I find with the spark, I get cold spots a lot easier because the down clumps up a bit easier on the small baffles compared to the ascent down that, um, I don't have it anymore from them, but that one had much larger baffles and was a heavier bag, less expensive, but it was a, a better sleep experience in that case. More consistent for sure. Yeah. Makes sense. All right. Let's, uh, I, I, I think I had sleeping pad comfort next, but I want to kind of leave that to a little bit later, um, as well, push okay. that down a bit. <laughs> um, cause I, th- I think, I think we're going to kind of build up to sleeping pad comfort. I know for me, that's one of the primary things that, that I look for in a sleep, in a, in a sleeping pad is comfort. I'd probably put it, I, it, it's, it's tough to say whether it's more important to me than warmth because warmth is kind of one of those things where if you're not warm, you're just not going to sleep at all. So I think warmth is probably priority one and then comfort for me and then probably weight. Um, where, where does, where do those three things fall for you as on the priority scale? Um, I mean, that's the trifecta right there. Comfort, weight, and warmth. Um, but yeah, comfort would be highest priority because good sleep in the backcountry is something that I don't know. That's that's a very important part of my trip experience is getting good sleep. Um, but then obviously warmth. Like <laughs> you're not going to get good sleep if you're not if you're not sleeping warm, right? Yeah, you need you need to be comfortable. So that's. And I think it's interesting to, to to hear weight. I think what's nice with weight is that we've gotten to a point where there's a lot of options that are light enough. They're they're not like the lightest options out there, but they're light enough that they're not going to be holding you back from having a good time on the trail, which is a nice place to be. This is how unimportant weight is for me. Pack size is more important than weight, honestly. Uh, there was a trip last year that I took a Plex Solo as, as my tent. And I took the Quasar 3d. <laughs> as my sleeping pad, which is over two times the weight, two and a half times the weight of the, uh, the Plex solo. It's like, it's yeah. If, if you're taking the 25 by th- 72, I'm just on the, the pack wizard website here. In it's the it's pad, over a thousand pad grams, section. right? It's, it's 850 grams for the for the 25 okay. by 72 inch uh, quasar, which is lighter than I thought. I thought it was over a thousand grams as well, but still, like two and a half times the the weight of the Plex Solo. Yeah, and that's what 22 ounces, 23 ounces, something like that. The the Plex Solo, or the the quasar, the quasar. Ah, uh, the 30 out 30.4 ounces. 30. Man, I'm way off. <laughs> yeah that's that's yeah that's that's I, I do the same thing like often oftentimes these days my sleeping pad weighs more than my tent and i'm i'm okay with it <laughs> yeah we can come back to the quasar because i'm giving a hint to the answer to one of your questions all right <laughs> I, an, an interesting one that i added that i added into um kind of the list here was the best sleeping pad feature that you've come across. Cause I think some brands have some interesting little, little things that they do with either the pads or, or the entire kind of like bag pad system. Um, that's kind of neat. Even, even like their, their inflation sacks and that kind of thing. Is there a, a pad that comes to mind and a feature with that pad that you think kind of stands out from, from the rest? That, that is a really good question actually. <laughs> Um, I would, I would think that the development of the quilted 
baffling of pads would be probably the most unique and I think innovative features that have been developed in pads over the I don't know who did it first. It was C to Summit. It was C to Summit. Yeah. Okay. So I guess they're, what do they call them? Airsprung? Yes. Airsprung cells. That innovation, I think, is as close to what mimics an actual bed at, at your house than anything else. And so now to see plenty of other other companies, some that are doing it really well, others that are mimicking but obviously it's garbage um i'm calling out stuff you'd find on amazon or that has the welds that are like touching each other and they're i don't know you can't get hardly any support on them yeah maybe that's why they're 30 to 40 bucks um but i would i think that that is is game changer for sure in sleep quality because I despise sleeping on the the X light and I use the X therm only out of necessity for warmth. That's the only reason and the, and the pack size. Um, otherwise, I would use the Etherlight Extreme for that more comfortable sleep experience. Yeah, yeah. The pack, size the pack size is down. just it's just too much. And I'm not willing to compromise going to a less wide pad just to reduce the pack size. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a big, big trade-offs once you start taking warmth, warmth into account. I think kind of in line with it, it actually was a feature that came out with the Etherlight XT and that baffling system was the valve system that Cedar Summit developed for that. Um, I just love, love that valve so much. It's like, I, I see valves like, like big Agnes has their double valve system or with the zoom UL, they have just like the flap that you have to kind of push the cap back into to deflate it. And one of my favorite things is to be able to just like pull the full flap out, dump all the air and just fold the pad up really quickly. Um, that's something even, even with the x and stuff, like with the wing lock valve, even though I do like that valve system, it's not nearly as good as the seat summit one. Yeah. I think where you and I maybe disagree a little is on the Nemo pads. I love the Nemo valve, but I know a lot of people have, have an issue with it. Maybe it's, maybe it's too tight and they find that they're pulling both ends out at the same time a lot and it's dumping all the air but I actually really like that valve. I like the position of it in the corner of the pad. That's what I don't like about the Big Agnes pads, even though I primarily sleep on Big Agnes, <laughs> <laughs> right now at least. Um, that valve is like weirdly positioned, and I like I like it on the corner. Yeah, I like them on the top too. I hate when they put the valves on the bottom of the pads because I do like to kind of fiddle with it throughout the night or... Or even a lot of the time, if you are sleeping in colder temperatures, you inflate your pad, the temperature drops, the air inside the pad kind of is is less full, like the pad's less full and you need to add some air into it before bed. Um, it's a pain to do that if you've set up an entire sleep system on top of the pad. Yeah, and I don't know the actual physics and how this works, but I had an X-Ped pad that anytime I would do like micro adjustment on the, the two-way valve, um, with the little flapper thing, the X pad pad had the valve on, on the bottom side and it wouldn't close up all the way. I don't know if that's just cause it's not getting as much like down pressure from your body on the pad as opposed to like it faced the other direction. I don't know if that makes sense, but very often with that pad, when I was using it, if I did the micro adjustments, it would continue to slowly leak until I like fiddled with it. And that was frustrating. Yeah. Yeah. That's happened to me with, with x pads. And I've had to, like, if, especially if I'm laying on it and then blowing into it, um, if I have it like upside down. So I then have to like get completely off the pad, kind of fiddle with the little flap. And then I can, then it closes up fully and I'm able to get back on the pad because I've, I've opened yeah. up with the super, pad fully deflated. Weird. It's yeah. It's, it's I weird. think, I think it also has to do with the way that they have the, um, 
like the deflation like thing that is attached. It's like it it's almost like a zipper pull, which I think it actually is a zipper pull that they've just repurposed, but it has like rough ridges on it. And I think over time of using it, it's actually causing damage to the flapper prematurely. So you're not getting a good seal. And I've never never been a fan of that. I'm just super nitpicky. <laughs> you know what? Nitpicky it's- stuff. It's, it's those but, little things that just like kind of make the like when it, when you don't have to think about it and it's not like something that you're like ah why this just happened it's it's frustrating when it takes you out of the experience of being in the back country I find and kind of just enjoying your time when you're having to like fiddle in order to just be comfortable and have a good night's sleep <laughs> yeah and that's I mean you brought up like pump sacks for example I actually I know Nemo gets a lot of flack for their vortex pump sack i love that thing i think it is the best pump sack that comes with any sleeping pad and you just have you just have to know how to use it a lot of people try to like bring it up really close to their mouth and they're like this doesn't inflate (laughs) yeah 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 i think it's a good one too i think a lot of people need to need like need to realize that you need to blow into those pump sacks from about a foot away from them and then they'll take one breath to put in like six breaths worth of air into the into the sack. It's but uh, can, I tell you, can I tell you a funny story about that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you told me one that I have, I have one for you right after too. <laughs> okay. So a few years ago, um, my boss at at Waymark, we we went to the PCT Days uh, Festival in uh, in Oregon at Cascade Locks, and we were spending the first night in one of the motels on the Washington side. <laughs> and we were playing rock, paper, scissors on who got to sleep on the floor on the, on their air pad. Cause the beds were disgusting. And, uh, so Mark, Mark won rock, paper, scissors. And he had, he had a tensor that he was getting that was brand new. Like he had just recently bought it, maybe used it a, a few times. And he's got his face like right up into the, into the pump sack. <laughs> and he's like, this thing doesn't freaking work. Like, what does this work? And I was like, Mark, you have to like keep your face like six to eight inches away from it and like get the ambient air like into the bag as well and, and that'll inflate it. And I was like, it's called the Bernoulli effect. And so Bernoulli has become this like joke at work now that we'll just like get tubes of fabric that have they're like the the role is is gone now and we'll just like across the the shop like Bernoulli <laughs> <laughs> all because of all because of the Nemo pump sack nice was, <laughs> was he blowing into it like like trying to blow air through the bag into the pad or was he like still still actually like pushing air out of the bag he was he was just trying to inflate the pump sack to then push air into into the pad okay because there's because the the, uh, <laughs> the 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 worst the worst with that i've seen with with that kind of system doing it incorrectly was my now my now wife um for those of you who who have been following the channel you know i was getting married it it, it happened happened uh this past saturday a couple of days ago so if i'm a little tired if i look a little tired that's that's on this episode that's, that's <laughs> why <laughs> but um steph, steph was this this was actually when we were broken up in between two dating dating times. Um, we were on a trip with with our friends, and she was inflating the sleeping pad or trying to by just blowing air into the bag and then hoping that the air from the bag would then just continue on into the sleeping pad. So she was just like continuously just blowing without actually pushing the air. And I asked her, I was like, "What are you doing? Like that's not." She's like, "This is how they told me to do it in the store." And oh my gosh. I actually went That's amazing. And told it was a C to Summit um, pad. I t- at a at a meeting with C to Summit that week and told them and they're like, what store is it? And then they they actually like had an entire training session with that store in order to then educate them on how to, how to instruct customers to use the pads. It was, I was like, oh, I I was kind of saying it offhand, but the guy took it. it the C to Summit took it very seriously. Like, it makes sense. You don't want you want people to be using your your products properly. So sounds like the minds of engineers. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. All right. I think <laughs> let's, let's, let's jump into most comfortable 
sleepy <laughs> cat because I think uh, okay. I think we I think we have I think we have some thoughts on that. Um, let's let's start with let's start with you. Um, is there is there one pad that jumps out as the most comfortable sleeping pad for you, or you kind of have a, a few like ifs and maybes um, to throw to throw at us? So, on, honestly, it's really hard to say one single pad is the most comfortable. I would okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you three and ex- explain my reasons. So, the Nemo Quasar 3D is massively comfortable. It's it's incredible. The Zoom UL and the Etherlite XT. Okay, let's, let's yeah, let's start with the Quasar because I'm really curious to hear what makes it comfortable because I've never tried it, but I look I look at the vertical at the horizontal baffles and I'm sure you've got this comment and people have mentioned this to you, but it. Just like 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 with what what makes it different from like the X Lite that actually that leads to it being comfortable. Yeah, and that I, I was nervous about getting the pad for that reason because I can't stand the baffle system on the X Lite. It's it feels like you're on a bunch of like tubes like that are that are rigid. Like my my arm falls I, asleep a, every time I sleep on my side with it. Yeah, as a, as a side sleeper, things just fall asleep, and it's yeah, it's not a great sleep experience. But the Quasar has much wider baffles, and through the torso, it's like it has a scooped shape to it. But they're also like they're not perfectly horizontal across the the top of the pad. They're scooped, and they kind of like contour in at like some angle um and i and i feel like that scooping action mixed with the the width of the baffle and the pad at the right like inflation makes it incredibly supportive okay like it it very much feels like your body is just supported in ways that a horizontal baffle that big feels like it shouldn't, but I have had some of the best nights of sleep on that pad. Interesting. Okay, you you've convinced me. You've convinced me now. Even though I've watched but all it, of your videos <laughs> where you've talked about <laughs> it, <laughs> but it also like the pad is taller at the head end, and it tapers and is smaller at the foot end. Do you know why that is? And well. I think it, uh, I mean, it's been a long time since I've dug into like their marketing spiel around the reason for that. But what I do feel like it gives me more confidence in is because the pad sits taller and as I'm a side sleeper, I end up not having my head downhill more often because of that height. So I'm more confident in my like tent site selection being not as awesome in knowing that the pad is basically going to compensate for that like headache that comes from sleeping downhill that sometimes you just can't avoid. It's just, it's not possible, but the extra height, especially like it's the last like two baffles at the head end have the most height to them. I think there it's like four four and a half inches almost okay and then your pillow on top of that it's it's really nice and especially as a side sleeper i think a lot of pillows out there there's there's only a few that kind of break that four inch mark and for a lot of people who um like especially for men who may have broader shoulders like if you're sleeping on your side you need that extra height and it'd be like i know a lot of people who stuff clothing underneath their pillows or like use a lot two pillows even um and stacked on top of each other so having that extra little yeah couple inches would be nice yeah the other thing that i that i feel like makes that pad be more supportive is the higher denier fabric that's used on it because it, it's thicker than it is on the tensor and it's i i would i'm just now thinking about this since we're digging into it, 
but it's probably why I'm okay sleeping on the X-Therm because the X-Therm has the thicker denier or heavier denier uh, fabric on it than the X-Lite. And I I feel like that uh, 30 to 40 denier fabric versus like the 20 or even 15 that sometimes gets used just handles body weight better when it's in got its full inflation and it makes it more supportive i don't know if that's actually scientific that's but... interesting because I, i've noticed kind of a similar thing with the x light versus x therm like i for some reason sleep more comfortably on the x therm and i could never really pin it pin it down but that that's really the only difference is is the 20 is denier the fabric, versus 30 right? denier fabric yeah like it has more reflective material inside, but you're not, it's not really going to affect like the, the outside sleep comfort. I don't think so. That's, that's interesting. Something to definitely think about it, look into a bit more. Yeah. Maybe, maybe we should call up C to summit or <laughs> yeah. Meet Nemo and say, Hey, yeah, spill bring, the beans. Bring, is this, bring Barry is this in true? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But let's let's actually let's jump over to the before we do the big Agnes one. Let's jump over to see this, the Etherlight XD because um, that was the last one, the third one you listed for comfort. And I think you've kind of explained that like the baffling system is a big part of that. And um, maybe 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 I'll just paint a picture for the people at home if they're not familiar with the Etherlight XD and um, the kind of quilted baffling system that we've mentioned. And I think we're going to mention a few more times probably as we talk about sleeping pad comfort. But it's you basically have these alternating like dimples and then raised kind of bump areas over the course of the pad and with Cedar Summit they call it air sprung technology and when I was chatting with with Cedar Summit on the last episode it hasn't hasn't aired when we're recording this but they're talking about how it's kind of like air springs kind of like an air like a spring mattress that's the the goal for um for those little raised areas you lay on them and it it creates a, a pressure relief point and I think it was he was mentioning it's like a hundred or over over a hundred little raised areas on the Etherlite XT that are all pressure relief points, and that's what is kind of like the magic magic behind it. And for for you, like when, with the Etherlite XT, is that it's got kind of the main thing that's leading to good comfort is is that pressure relief aspect. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Especially once you like are digging your hip and your shoulder into into the pad. The distribution, or I feel like it, it just supports that body weight better when, because on your back, you're like distributing your weight more across more of the pad, right? But when you're on your side, you've got it into a smaller area. And that's what I don't like about XPED, for example, with their long vertical uh, tubes you get your shoulder like into one of those creases and it's game over. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) You're done. Yeah. Um, So that's, that's what I like about that, about that pad. Okay. And, and uh, I think, I think for me, like I find it pretty supportive as well. Like the way, because you have so many attachment points between the bottom of the pad and the top of the pad. I find that like the edge support is, is quite good with, with those kind of pads. As, as well um especially relative to like the the horizontal baffle ones vertical baffle pads maybe we'll, maybe we'll talk about this next just just to kind of touch on it because i think we'll we'll definitely get some people asking about like why about like expect pads like the new rad pad and the different vertical baffles out there but um yeah definitely more supportive and then with the zoom zoom ul um the, the same same kind of thing is there anything else that kind of makes like sets it apart from the ethelite xt in your opinion yeah yeah, yeah. What I like about the the big Agnes, and it goes back to that like scooping idea that the Quasar has, is the outside baffles of the big Agnes pads. At least on the Rapide, the Q Core SLX that is discontinued now, but then also the Zoom. That outside baffle is taller than the inside, and I feel like it they say it helps keep your body like centered on the pad, which I think is, is true. Like I would agree with that, but I also feel like it helps with that 
like the the pad shapes to you a bit more because of that and gives more support from edge to edge because yeah i don't know i can speculate on the science behind it and why they do it but i feel like it it helps keep your body like where the most support of the pad is and that's on the quilted stuff once you get your body off of it that's probably where you you lose the comfort aspect yeah true that makes sense and i think something that that uh, i think like i i don't talk about a whole lot on my channel that's kind of i've been thinking about a bit more is different weights for people and kind of body shapes and how it relates to sleeping pad comfort um so if you, if, you, if you don't mind sharing, how much how much do you weigh, Devin? I just went to the doctor today. <laughs> nice. Weigh 168 pounds. 168 pounds. Okay. Um, so, so you're probably like around average, maybe like a little bit lighter than average. Um, I'm 180 80 pounds, and I think so. We're 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 pretty close to, to to like kind of that between 160 190 range, which I think is probably where where most most men lie um i and and i and i think about like people who weigh on the the lighter end or the heavier end and how how they sleep on some of these pads and i i did ask c to summit like what their thoughts on they they basically said people who who are heavier just should inflate their pads more especially with one of these dimpled baffling systems because you're essentially like stiffening the spring and then people who are lighter can deflate a little bit because then you're softening the spring and you're because like with with the like you have the, the the bumps the raised areas and they all have kind of like a a certain height from the bottom of the dimple and that's something that that, that i'm going to kind of get into in a second here when i talk about my favorite pad but yeah i think if you make that little raised area stiffer than um someone heavier it'll kind of go down to that dimple point where it, the pad then reaches kind of like equilibrium, I guess. Um, that was something interesting. But for, for me, my the most comfortable pad that I've used is, is the Ethylite XD. Clo close second has been the REI um, Helix sleeping pad, similar kind of pattern. Um, I've probably slept... I, 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 it's, it'd probably be very hard to tell the difference for me which one is more comfortable. I'd have to like really do a really in-depth A-B test but slept great on both of them. I, I've i used the Zoom UL um, kind of back-to-back -back with the Helix, and I didn't sleep as comfortably. And I'm wondering if part of it is due to, to, to weighing a bit more than you as well. Um, I, I measured the height of, like, the difference between the, the bottom of the dimples and the and the top of the, the raised areas on the Zoom UL and the Ethylite XT, and there's a bigger difference in height of the like kind of air springs on the Ethylite X. Gotcha. So I'm wondering if that's providing more interesting like pressure relief for me um, compared to like, I, I don't, I, I'm not sure like 10 to 15 pounds. Maybe, maybe that's, maybe that makes a big enough difference, but I know like Steve with my life outdoors, he's really like the zoom UL for comfort as well. And I think he weighs closer to that 170 range as as well so um something that i, I just i, I want to look at more because i've never really thought about it until i was trying to figure out like why why is the zoom ul not feeling as comfortable to me after a handful of nights and that's really the only thing i could i could think of um yeah one one thing i'll point out about the zoom is i inflate that pretty dang firm mm -hmm. And I, that's how I like to sleep is on a very firm pad. Um, and I know a lot of people, they'll fill it up to capacity as much as they can get it. And then they'll like take some air out. I very, very rarely do that on the, on the X therm. I do it because otherwise it is way too stiff, but the zoom, I, I enjoy having that as a, as a pretty firm pad. And I wonder if that adds any element to kind of what you're talking about. Yeah, maybe, maybe it comes down to even like with people with their mattresses at home, like some people like a, and sleep better on like a firmer mattress versus a less firm mattress. So 
like even even if it's not a weight factor if you sleep better on sli- in, on slightly firmer mattresses than me and the springs are a little bit smaller on the zoom then and you're getting that slight firmness more firmness to it then maybe that's that can be the, the differentiator there um because i usually do i sleep on kind of like a I like a medium soft mattress at home and i think gotcha. that's kind of the experience i get out of the the etholite xt whereas i did find yeah the zoom ul a little bit firm from a pressure relief standpoint so that's 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 interesting it's, i wonder if like that's something that i don't think comes up when people are talking about like what pad would you like comparing it to like what do you sleep on at home um i've never really heard that kind of comparison of like do you sleep on a firm mattress at home medium or soft and then kind of aligning mattress like sleeping pads i wonder if we're gonna get into that down the road like seeing so that manufacturers releasing like a uh, soft firm medium etholite xt <laughs> Yeah, or maybe an easier way to, because you can only inflate like with so much pressure from your mouth, right? Or from a pump sack is going to be, I imagine, less pressure. And so that could, that could be, because sleeping pads now by standard come with inflation sacks, like pump sacks, I wonder if people are, not getting the full experience out of a sleeping pad because they're unwilling to use their mouth because it's been marketed so much that don't let moisture get into your sleeping pad. It's going to grow mold. It's going to be this big issue. And so people are not getting possibly the full experience that they deserve from a sleeping pad because they're only using the pump sack and not adding additional. Obviously we don't know the, that's a that's a hypothesis of yeah information. So you're, you're saying but... that like you you after inflating with the sack, you'll you'll add a few breaths just to kind of really firm it up after. Yeah, or a lot of times I'm using the a flex tail tiny pump, and then I'm adding additional air. Yeah, from my I, mouth, I, I do the same thing because I think what a lot of people might not know either is that sleeping pad our value is based off of a fully inflated pad and you're going to maximize your pad warmth when it's fully inflated and as it decreases in inflation you're going to decrease the r value and warmth of that pad and it makes sense when you kind of think about it because you're you're make, you're getting closer to the ground there's less of a, a delta there and compressing yeah. insulation and and as somebody that takes new backpackers out as a guide i'm guiding uh, college students several times a year. It's very common for me to, to see their sleep systems when I, when I, and it's a whole gamut of every, everything that you can imagine that a brand new first time backpacker is using borrowed gear, stuff from Amazon, stuff that I don't know. It's the whole, it's a whole spectrum and more often than not, the pad is like, if you were to take it out, it's like half inflated and floppy and like tacos over itself. Like I want to see a pad, like when you hold it out with one hand, it's like stiff as a board. Like it holds its shape. It's not folding how or have an arc or anything in it. And with my students, it's more often than not that I see you need more air in your pad. Exactly. Yeah, that's, that's that's a big thing I think a lot of people miss. And and also I think there's some pads out there where you kind of have like with with the the Neo Air Thermos Neo Air pads, you kind of have to decrease the air in them in order to get a little bit more comfort out of them. But I think for most pads out there, that's not the case, and should be inflating them, inflating them, especially with those dimple patterns. I think especially with those, like you're maximizing the comfort by inflating them a bit more. And okay, so let's let's jump into let's jump into some of the more controversial topics here. And excellent. Before we get into overrated pads, that's always my favorite. I love talking about overrated gear because it always ruffles ruffles feathers, and um, it's it's only our opinions. It's it's not like uh, I'll, definitely um, people will disagree. But before that, are there sleeping pads that? Maybe let's do a quick a quick rundown of if you've had any sleeping pads fail on you, and then we'll get into maybe what sleeping pads people should avoid as well. 
Um, the only path that I've had fail, like be an absolute issue was a climate pad, a static, static V. How did it fail on you? Uh, it just had awful leaks. It just leaked like crazy, which I know is a very, very common complaint with, with that pad. Um, and for the life of me, I could not find where the leak was coming from, but it did not hold air. That's for <laughs> dang sure. <laughs> it was in a bathtub. It was in a lake. It was like every way that I could try to find the leak. There was, you could argue there was no leak, but that thing did not hold air. It was, it was as good as trash as it was a sleeping pad. Yeah. Interesting. And, that, and that's, that's the only, only failure you've had, eh? It, yeah. And I mean, I, I had a, an X pad pad that I pulled out of the tent one, one morning and I chucked it across the slick rock a little bit and it sliced like a good three inch gash in it. And I was like, <laughs> cool. <laughs> That's fun. So get to manage that. <laughs> but it, I mean, I, I was able to patch it cause it was a very large gash, but Outside of that, I feel like I've been very lucky because on my videos, I will put out a video on like a tensor or a big Agnes pad and I get people all the time. They're like, I had issues out of the box with that thing. It never, never held air it was from the factory. It leaked or there was a baffle issue or something. That's way less common, but I have never had of all of the pads that I have tested. I've never had a pad out of the box leak. I've never had like a factory defect that way. And it's crazy because I mean, the amount of sleeping pads that I have used and for that to be the case, that's just, it's crazy. Yeah. yeah. That's, 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 those, those are good odds. And I think, I, I think it, it's, there's definitely, um, a factor out there of, of people who are having these failures being more vocal about them than people who aren't having failures as well. So I think right. and I, that's... I see that on the channel as well. And I've, I've had two, two failures that happened at the exact same time. I took my Nemo tensor out, my three season Nemo tensor out last spring to, to test out. And, and in the spring, I always inflate my three season pads just to make sure they still hold there, even though I'd never had a failure before. And the tensor had, leaks at the weld points um in the dimples <laughs> and then i was like okay i guess i'm taking out my etherlight xt i took out the etherlight xt exact same issue um leaks it was three that one was three years old the tensor was two years old but both of them had leaks at the weld points and um from what i've heard from both companies that's it's it's very rare but it does it does happen um and i i think i get asked all the time like why i don't talk more about pad durability and reliability as part of reviews and sleeping pad compilations and i think i think it kind of comes down to like what you said it's like it's a one data point from one person for reliability and that's not going to really help people i think if if i, I always tell people if, if you want to get the best as good of information as you can get just read the reviews on sites like rai and backcountry and um that are selling lots of pads and just kind of do a meta analysis of how many failure rates are across different pads because that's going to be a lot better than you or I talking about the one pad that we have that was probably a good pad. <laughs> yeah. And there is another factor to that, that people have to realize that some people just like to take really good care of their gear. Yeah. Same here. <laughs> and so when you're talking about durability, like, I am very careful with my gear. I don't drag my pads outside of the tent. I don't like, I don't allow opportunities for crazy things to happen <laughs> in, in that way. So some of that like durability conversation is not uh, unbiased because I, because I put so much attention into 
I want to, I put a lot of money of my hard earned money into this. I want it to last a long time. I'm not willing to, un unless a company was like, Hey, torture test this. Then I'll be like, game on. Done. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what they should be doing. I feel like they should be, uh, sending us two pads, one to torture test and then one to use long-term <laughs> for, yeah. for our yes. <laughs> <laughs> So I think let's, let's jump into, are there pads that you would like tell people like avoid, um, no matter what? It's a tricky question because there's people, everyone's in different circumstances and you know, like, but are there a couple that you're just like, yeah, don't, don't even bother. I don't think anybody, and I assume you're kind of coming from the mindset of giving a recommendation to a new backpacker, somebody getting started, or I just think in it general. Could, could be could be anybody, um, but probably a new backpacker who's getting like their first their first pad. Okay, anything close cell foam. I, 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 I think, like. The idea of let's walk into Walmart and spend seven dollars on that classic roll-up blue foam pad. Awful decision. Like, yeah, it costs you seven bucks, but you are going to sleep terrible. That's that's a good one. I hadn't even thought about that. Yeah. yeah. And even I mean, even when you have a company like like Nemo, who has put a lot of technology into that switchback. A pad with like the the egg carton type of of shape on it and stuff. Have you laid on one of those and ever thought like, oh man, this is awesome. Like I am, I am enjoying my life right now. Like, <laughs> it doesn't exist. Those yeah. are, those are meant for through hikers that in their twenties <laughs> are <laughs> that are in their twenties that still have rubber bones and are willing <laughs> to just deal with it because it, I mean, it's just like anything else when you're sleeping in that, uh, circumstance every single night, your body gets used to it. That that's a totally different situation where a closed cell phone pad does play a role in a sleep system is adding our value and a barrier to cold ground. Yeah. That's where, that's where those those and having a picnic and lunch when you're taking a break from hiking. Yeah. That's about it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but I would also add, I would avoid pads that are outside of your budget because there are a lot of really great pads that are in the 120 to $180 range. And there's also amazing pads that are 250, 270, like really expensive pads. And I think you can still get fantastic sleep for some of those those lower price points. Yeah, that's a good one too. And I think what one of one of my kind of angles from when we were going to talk about most overrated pads has to do with kind of price. And and rec and the number of recommendations the pads the pads receive, but I think the the closed cell phone pads one's a great one, especially if you're starting out and you want to enjoy yourself. You're you're not you're much less likely to enjoy yourself sleeping on a thin foam pad than you are if you get an inflatable pad. And then if if you don't enjoy yourself, you're going to be less much less likely to go out on on subsequent trips. And I think another one that I I think is is I, I kind of go back and forth on because they are quite affordable are some of the pads on Amazon that you can get for thirty, forty dollars. It's kind of in the same vein as the closed cell foam pad ones. Um I just don't find them super comfortable. Like I I just, I just picked one up for twenty dollars on Amazon. There it's it's just an air pad that they've kind of just pressed this pattern into and it it kind of looks good and I and I actually thought it sleep decently for twenty dollars but i i don't sleep well on it at all and i find that's the case with with some of these pads there are some good ones um on on amazon and for like under a hundred dollars and people can can consider those and maybe take take a look at the reviews and stuff but 
I'd be careful about them because there are some that might be misleading from a comfort standpoint. Yeah, and that's a whole other conversation of like OEM products, white label stuff that we obviously don't have time to go into, but you have to be cautious with that kind of stuff. I The only other thing that I would add from a, an avoidance standpoint is one-off pads that are coming from a company that, um, and it doesn't mean that they're necessarily bad pads, but I feel like from an engineering standpoint, pads are massively complicated and I'm going to trust a company that has multiple pad options that clearly has invested a lot of their capital <laughs> as a company into the development of a pad that not only am I going to get a better warranty from that probably, but also just reliability and durability and a better sleep experience. And I, to me, that's Thermarest, C to Summit, Xped, um, Big Ag Big Agnes, Nemo. When I see, and I'll I'll just like again, it does not mean that they're bad pads. The we just don't know the amount of time or it's very early in their development process. But like Outdoor Vitals has a new pad. How good is it as their single like new pad or Sierra Designs has a couple sleeping pads. I don't know that those are going to be really great pads, even though the price point is probably there. I'm going to steer towards Nemo, Big Agnes, and such. And because you can look at it and go, yeah, they've clearly invested a lot of time, man hours, money into the development of this. And I think that I think that's a big deal. Like it seems kind of like if if you're a very casual backpacker, maybe that kind of detail is so beyond ridiculous. <laughs> but if you spend multiple nights a year, I, I would say if you're out like three to four times a year minimum, then investment into a into a quality pad is absolutely worth it. Yeah, I think that's 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 a good point too. Like if if you're going, if you know you're going to be going out three or four times a year, multiple time, multiple years in a row, it's it's worth getting a good night's sleep, being warm, being comfortable, and getting getting a good sleeping pad. I think, I think, I think we've kind of given a good idea, uh, like where wh who's making good sleeping pads and what those pads could be in this in this uh, in this episode, and some ideas of what of what to avoid. But I think. Yeah, I, let's let's jump into overrated now. Overrated because I think for me, I'll I'll start it off with most overrated sleeping pads because I just I just, I just love it. And uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna start off with maybe I'll start off with the less controversial one probably, and that's that's climate pads. And we kind of talked about it earlier with regards to our values and some companies is kind of making up our values. And um, maybe this wasn't something that they did with kind of bad intent but right I, it wasn't malicious i don't think in any way yeah but like uh, the static v was rated as a 4.4 r value by climate and then once they got it astm tested it went down to 1.1 1 .1. and they I, I know their reasoning they say that your sleeping bag lofts up into the ridges and fills them up and then provides additional insulation but um i've I've tried, I've tried that system with them and it just has never worked for me in staying warm. My, my issue with that is the regular consumer that's looking at that on a shelf that is never going to cross their mind. It's never going to be something they're like, oh, the shape of these baffles in my sleeping bag are going to work together. Like, yeah. yeah. No one thinks about that. Especially the person that they're targeting with that sleeping pad. It's a very affordable sleeping pad at usually around like $60 or so. Um, and I yeah. see it recommended yeah. all the time as 
a good pad for people getting into backpacking. But I've also known many, many people who have bought it as their first sleeping pad and then been miserably cold on many trips and then had to then go spend another $160. So they end up spending a lot more than they need to by buying two pads. Yeah, so that's yeah, that's that's the first one. This the second one is, and this is completely based off of it. it like this is the, in the context of overratedness, and that's that people rate it very highly. They recommend it a lot, and that's that's going to be the X light because I see it all the time on in Facebook groups and on forums where people just say, "What's the I need? I want to see," and and they they actually list out their priorities of things of like comfort being the number one priority. And then I see the X like being recommended when someone has comfort as a priority. And I think it's, it's just people who own X lights recommending X lights without having maybe tested out a lot of other pads. Um, and it's, I, th I think anyone who's tested out a lot of pads, I, I don't know anyone in that group who has said like the X lights, the most comfortable pad that they've used. Um, even yeah. if they're a back sleeper, like I got, we all, we all talk in the YouTube and the review world. Like there's, there's a lot of us and we all talk about different things and we, you, we, you see the reviews out there and I don't think the X light ever comes up top as, as like the most comfortable pad. Yeah. Yeah. But that's, that's where, that's where I land on those. What, what about you, Devin? Um, I, I might get burned over the stake for this a little bit <laughs> i love the nemo tensor i think it is a fantastic sleep experience but i when you compare it to a lot of the other options out there it is i just don't think it is as great as as many people say it is i i as my education and my experience of sleeping pads has has grown and increased, the 20 denier nylon is just, it's not enough. Po polyester, and, so it's even less durable or, than, than a nylon. Sorry, po po yeah, polyester. Yeah. Which it makes for an, an incredibly light pad. It's a very warm pad. Like the newest version has increased in our value. Like it truly is a fantastic pad my kid my kids sleep on one i've got a, sh a short tensor that they sleep on and i yeah but i think that what i see online like especially just in youtube or other like written views, reviews and stuff it's not the most comfortable pad out there and i think it gets the misnomer of well it's three inches thick and it's got the the R value, and that's like it's the most well rounded well rounded pad. Like, no, I would argue that the Repeat SL is probably, or the Etherlite are probably the the most like the best all around pads that that you could put your money into. I, I agree. I think the Tensor came out at a time when the comfort was just starting to get pushed. I think in sleeping pads as far as like, I think see the summit was maybe the, the year after the tensor, maybe the same year, um, around the same time. And I think people are just starting to really kind of see comfort being pushed with regards to sleeping pads. And now I think we've moved past the tensor as it being a top contender for comfort. And it just can now just get slotted right into that kind of like, ultra. it's a very light pad, especially for how warm it is, um, still up there with the zoom UL and, and X light. So I think I, I just kind of slot into that. It's, it's ultralight may not be the most comfortable, comfortable pad out there, but you're going to get good warmth for the, for the weight. Um, but I think it's still kind of living off of its initial rep, initial release reputation of just being like, yeah, like you said, a great all arounder and, and really comfortable. Cool. Yeah. In the Alpine version I used for a long time as well. Amazing. Like <laughs> it's really good, nice to sleep on that pad, but in comparison to what is now available, it yeah, there's better options. It's it's, it's pretty crazy that like it, now I think it's like a five point four R value, and we have pads, pre season pads that are in that 
in that realm now. So it's the warmth. The warmth is getting pushed. Comfort's getting pushed. It's it's pretty. It's a pretty exciting time for sleeping pads. Um, and I just want to give a shout out to uh, the website packwizard.com, which I've been developing with, um, with uh, a developer who used to work for Twitter. It helps research gear. And if you guys are interested in kind of looking at and comparing different sleeping pads, you can head head there and you can sort sleeping pads by their price, weight, minimum R value, width, all kind of things. I use it every day for research um, and kind of find different pads for different scenarios. So yeah, packwizard.com. And just want to say thank you, Devin, for coming on the pad podcast, especially it was, it was last, 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 last minute late notice. And yeah, I just <laughs> really, really appreciate you coming on. And um, I had you sign for sleeping pads for like next month um, to come on. I was just like, Oh, need to need to get this done now. And there's uh there's no one else out there that I would trust to uh, to talk about seeing pads with with a lot of experience more, oh, more than you. So really appreciate it. I'm I'm surprised there's not somebody better than better than me. There's got to be somebody better than there's, me. There's there's no one better than you, Devin. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're the, you're the man. <laughs> <laughs> no, I thanks, Justin. I appreciate the uh hanging out and the chat and nerding out on gear it's it's fun for sure yeah and we'll have we'll have to have you have to have you on again next time and uh yeah we'll we'll, we'll talk to you tomorrow most likely <laughs> awesome <laughs> <All right. Bye. laughs>